I'm from Massachusetts, town of Clinton. I was born until I was 17, and I joined the Air Force to get to see the world. Not a very patriotic gesture. I, I just wanted to well, get out of Clinton and see the world. So I ended up in the Air Force in Japan and then Korea and for four years. Uh, I certainly wasn't an activist then. I did what the boss told me, which is the way I was brought up. So welcome to my kitchen, and this is my bulletin board. When I have some serious thoughts and I can document it, I put it up here to remind me. So is this an expression about the war, about Mr. Bush, and about his mother and his father? And then some loved ones up here, my dog and some people I love. So it's got a wide range of emotions, but it's, um, this is a picture of a uh, uh, father welcoming home his son from Iraq with no legs and one arm gone. So this up here is a memento of being arrested in DC last year. I'm proud of it with Cindy Sheehan and Medea Benjamin and the cold pink ladies. Wonderful experience. Uh, I'm very proud of it. Um, this is the, my ticket that they gave me, 75 bucks. Uh, what else is up here? This is from the, not the celebration, the memorial of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. The Japanese people in the parade that I went to gave this to me. Uh, so anyhow, many memories, good stuff. And uh, uh, I think the biggest one for me right here is what the future is going to hold, because I really think we need a revolution to get this country back in shape again. So welcome to my gallery. These are paintings done by me. I'm studying at the Cambridge Adult Ed School in the studio school. They're all oils mostly on canvas, uh, mostly landscape kind of stuff, but a few other things. Uh, this painting here is really a collage. And at the beginning of the Iraq war, I was still studying painting there. And it was a mixed media class. <coughs> so I want to express my feelings about the invasion of Iraq. And so I did this. So it's a mixture of everything. It's just leaves. I may use leaves. I use photographs and oil paints and stuff. It's called Liberation. This is Iraq. These are Iraqis who were killed during <coughs> that bombing. These were American soldiers. These are caskets of American soldiers that have died and are still dying as we speak. When I did this, I thought the war would be over and that this would be an obsolete piece. It obviously isn't, it's still going on. And instead of putting my own signature on it, I put created by George Bush, because this is his creation, and this war is his creation, and hopefully someday he will pay for his crimes. And those are the oil wells that we are so anxious to get at in the background. So my work history, professional work history, has been uh, first as a special ed teacher, uh, then as a rehabilitation counselor, and my last job was working in a shelter, an emergency shelter for men, which I retired from, uh, I guess it's been seven or eight years now. Uh, right now I'm uh, retired and I spend all my time doing activist work and repairing lamps for to make a few extra bucks. <laughs> Kind of a short story. Uh, <clears throat> three years ago, I was making these little badges that said Impeach Bush. And some guy spotted me over at a local restaurant and, and said, hey, I, come, I, come, I got something to show you. Come by my place. So I went by and he gave me this t-shirt with big Impeach Bush on it. He said, I want you to have that as a gift. So I started wearing it and pretty soon everybody said, where'd you get it? Where'd you get it? Where'd you get it? And so I got ordered more. 
I started selling them. They cost nine dollars and ninety five cents. I'm going to be 77 in August, and I went through the time of the Vietnam War, Korean War is what I was in in the Air Force, and uh, I was always kind of sitting on the side and complaining and being a little active but never really passionate about it. And then uh, George Bush came along, and the uh, uh, election in Florida really got me going, and when the Supreme Court elected George Bush, uh, I became involved and in the lead up to the war I was really uh, angry and uh, pissed off actually. <laughs> so I knew I had to do something besides sit and complain. So I started going to the rallies, joining different groups and that's how I started. That was uh, approximately seven years ago. So now I go to every demonstration that I can get my hands on and I'll keep going. And um, the highlight of my activism Right now, I was getting arrested with Sidney Sheehan in D.C. It was a wonderful experience, very empowering, and I'm looking forward to the next time that happens again. Uh, uh, right now, uh, my passion is to end the war, bring the troops home now, and also to impeach George Bush. And so I've been kind of doing it on my own for a while, making badges and giving them to people. And then I ran into different people who feel the same way, and I'm now part of an organization called Bostonians for the Overthrow of King George. And we meet weekly in, in uh, Harvard Square, do leafleting, petitioning, uh, good people, it's growing, more and more people are involved in it, and if anybody out there hears this, come by on Sunday and you can come right in and <laughs> dig right in, we'll give you petitions, stuff to give you, and if you have questions, we'll try to answer everything about, that we know about the impeachment process. I'll put a plug in for women, by the way, because I, I notice when I give out these little badges, people say they are interested in the message and they ask for a badge, though a woman will take the badge and put it right in her chest. A man will take it and says he yes. agrees with everything I say, but he slips it in his pocket to think about it later <laughs> and get up enough coverage or I don't know what, but anyhow. so. I'm convinced the women are going to save the world, too, um, based, based on those ideas. <laughs> I'd like you to meet everybody out there, to meet Susan and Tom. These people are the organizers of Bostonians for the overthrow of King George, and we met in a bar room in East Boston <laughs> the first time we met. I responded to uh, uh, email message or, uh, about the meeting they were having about impeaching Bush and so I went there to check them out and this is what happened and they liked the idea of Harvard Square and showing and stuff and they taken it and run with it and this is why we're here right now yeah <laughs> so this is Tom Page hi this is Susan hi <laughs> oh it's been great it, it really has um, um, I'd say um, it runs most days around, you know, 90% supportive of yeah, the, the, the people 90. that that actually stop. Uh, it's no way to know uh, people that are rushing by to the to the T uh, whether or not they Often support us or not. Often uh, people make a direct line to us and say, "Thank you for doing this work. What what can I do?" I think that people feel really disempowered at the moment, and I think one thing that we're offering our community is to allow people to share their voices to get information, that's part, a big part of our group is to actually dispense information about impeachment and the proceedings and um, to just give people that moment where they can write a letter or sign a petition and have, you know, a moment of activism in their day. One part of the change we've seen is that people use, in the beginning would come up and say, why impeach him? What are you talking about? They want to know the details of the impeachment thing. More now come up and say, where do I sign? <laughs> Love 
worst president in my lifetime, that's for sure. <clears throat> Instead of complaining, like I did all my life about things and not taking an activist part in it, nothing will ever change. And once you t get a taste of activism or just going out and doing even a simple thing, you're never going to change yourself and you can't go back. You can't go back to the couch once you get a taste of that uh, possibility by doing that. When you see other people doing it and stuff like that, you, you'll never be the same person again. So uh, I would encourage people to give it a try and uh, make, make, gives your life some sense of uh, accomplishing something that's very important. So uh, we may not see some of the things we want change in our life, but this doing it now makes what happens in the future possibly happen because it, it's not going to change any other way. Uh, so I would encourage anybody who has any idea like that to just take even a small step and uh, see how they feel and then join the club. <laughs> Well, my war experience was quite uh, <clears throat> uneventful. <clears throat> I was a radar technician in the Air Force. And what that really meant is we were in, uh, well, Korea during the Korean War at an air base in Pusan. And uh, we could hear the bombs going off in the distance, but we weren't involved in any combat stuff. Uh, but we were able to witness the poverty of the Korean people at that time. Uh, so it, uh, you couldn't really call me a war hero. I just I was there uh, for about a year, uh, back to Japan, and then I was uh, discharged about that same time. I turned 21 in Japan. Uh, I never really thought it was a big deal being a veteran, because I uh, just it was just such a it was a peace time when I went in. I volunteered to go in, and uh, after four years, I got out. <laughs> so when, you know, when I'm talking about my family and a little bit of my history, it's, it's as complicated as other people's history is because we're a mixture of many things. My father was French-Canadian and Indian, Abenaki Indian, and my mother is Swedish and uh, Swedish and... Norwegian, Swedish, Swedish and Irish, I'm sorry, I forget. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, so that's the combination that we all are, you know, and uh, when I don't talk about it much, then of course I forget things like everybody else. So uh, I grew up in this family, uh, Irish, Catholic, French family, and uh, I have photos here of some of them, and uh, here's a photo of me and my father. I was 18, I just gone to the service, and my father was still in his 30s in this picture. He'd been in World War II, and he was out, I think he was just out uh, not too long. He, uh, well, anyhow, he was a war veteran, too. So that's my father. And uh, this is a photo of me in Japan when I was in the service. I was 19 years old when this was taken. Very handsome guy. and. Uh, to back up, uh, these photos of friends I grew up with, very special friends who I'm still friendly with. These, these two married one another and had many children. And this is my precious sister when she was still a teenager like me, whom I love dearly and am very close to still and always will. And during the course of my time, I spent some time doing some theater work up in North Conway, New Hampshire. And this is a photo of me on stage in a... Uh, uh, a woman's name was Pat, I forget her last name. And I was made up to be an old person, but I was 23, 24, something like that. And finally, my great-great-grandmother, who was the Abenaki Indian, somebody in the family dug up a small photo of her and had it enlarged, and I have it here. And uh, from what we hear, this, this is my great-great-grandmother. She was Abenaki Indian originally from Canada, and she was taken over the border by uh, my French great-great-grandfather <laughs> and then produced the offsprings that made my family like that. So this is her. I don't even know her name.
So this is where I come to deal with some of my anxieties and my frustrations and my hatred and everything else. Yeah, I have different ways of doing it. It helps me. I, I cry a lot and I drink a lot, but I have this other thing I do now that helps. And I didn't invent it. I heard about it. It was a, uh, either a book or a broadcast. I heard this grandmother talking to her grandson in the Middle East. And he is saying to her, Grandma, I can't stand it anymore. These people are killing everybody, destroying our country. It's really got me so upset. And she said to him, be patient. You're going to live long enough to piss on their grave. Now, I don't agree with the waiting part because that's what I've been doing all my life until now. But I do like the second part. And so I made a little grave for George Bush here. Magic marker thing. And when I really watch him on TV or listen to the news and I get so depressed and angry, I come out here at night and I take a piss on this grave here. And it, it, believe me, it helps, or it helps me anyhow. And uh, if you, I would recommend it to anybody. And if you don't have a backyard, you could come over here, use mine, and maybe we can drown the bastard. <laughs> so, see, just talking about it makes me feel good. <laughs>